to A Level Lessons Online. I hope you're having a f- um, fantastic day. Okay, good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time of the day or place it is over at your site when you're watching this video. Um, hope you are doing well. Okay, we are going to be moving on to our next part on Team 2.1 for our Human Geography syllabus, right? So we're going to be looking today specifically okay, at this thing called the production circuit of a GPN, okay, in, in short, okay, which is basically Global Production Networks, right? In the previous part, uh, part 9, I've already gone through what your NIDL is, so the New International Division of Labour. Okay, it's an interesting theory, um, a concept that you should be able to understand um, and it's important. Okay, it can come out for essays, it can come out for case studies, it can come out for anything, um, even if it's used as a form of evaluation okay, or explanation in your own um, other other questions um, of any sort of essay. Right? So today we're going to be starting on Global Production Networks, okay, looking at production circuit. Next part, I'll be looking more intra inter firm. Okay, I've already gone through a bit of that in one of my um, streams, okay, but that was a while back, right? So I'm going to be looking at that part um, again, okay, a, a formal lecture on, on that, that video, right? So let's just jump right in into GPN production circuit. Okay, what is um, the core of this GPN? Okay, what exactly is a GPN? So a GPN is essentially the circuit okay, of interconnected functions, operations, and transactions through which a specific good or service or commodity is basically produced, manufactured, distributed, and consumed. So think of it like a supply chain, all right? It goes from the source of raw materials followed by production, followed by um, distribution, followed by your consumers, all right? It is basically like a production chain, right? So it's how the good um, first starts, okay, or did that the, the commodity, okay, and, and the process in which it goes through the entire um kind of like a supply chain right so it will be firstly um sourced right then after that it will be produced or manufactured and then after that it will be distributed or retailed and then finally consumed by the consumer right so that's what our entire global production level is the main players involved in a gpn are definitely going to be your government as well as your transnational companies okay so a production circuit okay in this video we're going to be looking specifically at this thing called production circuit okay what exactly is a production circuit so a production circuit involves two or more value chains that share at least one actor okay what does this mean okay we'll go through it via the six different stages of inputs transformation distribution consumption additional inputs and control systems all right so if you look at firstly your inputs okay or the additional inputs okay they fall under around the same category okay inputs work throughout the entire production circuit okay think of it like you are feeding a system okay you are constantly feeding it so it basically includes things like technology uh technology inputs or energy inputs as well as service and logistical inputs okay throughout the entire production circuit right from the start when you're sourcing for your materials all the way down to the consumer end okay you're going to have to constantly need inputs right you're going to need energy to produce things you're going to need technology to market okay how your good is like so these are basically the the um what we call inputs okay when um it basically works okay throughout the entire production circuit or the production chain so technology inputs includes things like research design quality control product technology energy inputs includes the main one of electricity right which consists of fossil fuels or possibly renewable energy as well Service inputs refers to things like accountancy, human resources, advertising, marketing, maintenance. And lastly, logistical inputs. Okay, how do you get the good from one place to another, right? Through your um, air freight, through um, things like delivery vents, right? These are all logistical. So it involves the movement of products, materials, as well as your labor, okay, your people. Okay, they're also an input. Okay, without labor, um, your good won't be able to be produced. So that is also considered an input. Then you move on to transformation. Okay, transformation is where we take it to the next level. We are transforming what was originally a basic um, commodity, okay, or basic raw material, right? And we're transforming it into something that has been um, value added. So transformation refers to the transformation of these raw materials into a physical product, okay, something that is tangible. So the transformation stage usually involves assembly plants, production plants, okay, using um, areas with low cost labor and low skilled labor. Okay, reason being is that TNCs are the main um, stakeholders involved in running a GPN. So of course, you're going to want to find an area of low cost labor. Okay, as I've gone through in my previous video on NIDL, um, there is a reason behind all of these as well. So this is a transformation stage, very, very straightforward. Okay, then we move on to distribution. So distribution is how do we distribute something, so getting things into the consumer's hands. So it is the process of making the product available for the consumer or business. Um, it can be done okay, by the producer or a service provider. Okay, Things like um, Simply Post, things like um, your FedEx, right? These are all service providers okay, that by um, 
it can also be done via this way, okay, through distributing that product after it's been transformed. So you can also use indirect channels, okay, with higher distributors. It's like it's like similar to a service provider. Okay, so distribution can be done globally to all stores who are carrying this good or services. So it really depends, okay. Most companies um would like to distribute everywhere, okay, especially when you're looking at transnational companies, which is why you have you, you will find things like iPhones, okay, or Apple products in almost every single country, okay, because they are TNC, they operate via a GPN, so they will definitely want to um, distribute and retail their goods all across the world okay it's, that's the whole reason why they're involved in a global production network because it's global okay they want to be involved in um, getting their products all across the world then you've got consumption so consumption refers to the final product being um, consumed okay by you you yourself the customer who bought that good okay it's a final tangible product produced by the producer so this is usually the end stage of the production circuit okay when the consumer's needs and wants are fulfilled okay so likewise if we, if we boil back down to the basic rules of economics okay for those who guys who have learned economics is a basic rule of demand right you demand for a good um, the supplier acknowledges through the price and then they supply it okay likewise this is how a production circuit works it's through the consumer demand for a good they produce um, throughout this entire production chain and then lastly we end off with the consumer getting back that good okay, that they have they had first demanded so control systems is basically um, an extra part to this entire production circuit so control systems mainly perform high level high skilled jobs okay, you're looking at system management so it includes deeper market research management of companies customers inventory control um, it targets to improve things like customer service, expand its market share, and increase its sales volume. So this is kind of like uh, moving into the realm of research and development. Okay, we're looking for areas okay, in which we can tap on to ensure that our product gets to more people or that we grow as a company, um, as a global production network. So it involves heavy research and development. It is usually found in more developed areas. Okay, so control system is um, where they handle all the systems. Okay, they handle basically um, behind the, the behind the scenes works okay, of how a product comes out right when you get a product in your hands of course you have seen advertisements but who does these advertisements um who on earth does the research k okay, for this product um to ensure that it works okay, these are all handled by this thing called the control systems so in conclusion that's actually all for this part on production circuits okay it's basically a, a supply chain okay for those of you guys who have learned supply chain before so exam requirements just need to understand how the various stages of this production circuit works and then recognize that production circuits are also crucial to creating a gpn okay they are basically a GPN to begin with. Okay, they are a production circuit, but a global production circuit okay, definitely requires a lot um, of attention and a lot of different um, inputs and, and people to actually manage it. And there are also huge spatial variations. Okay, each stage is usually located in a different area. Okay, for example, the higher skilled areas um, would have things like control systems, they will have things like um, where the most consumers could be okay, as compared to possibly the lower skill which could involve things like your production plans um, and your sourcing of raw materials to begin with okay so that's what the uh, production circuit is all about okay, I think it's quite a simple part on your GPN it's only the first part of the, um, the whole GPN part um, so the next part we'll be looking more at what intra and interfirm networks are right, so you can stay tuned for that video okay this video make sure you understand what supply chain or what a production circuit is basically supposed to be and what the various stages are right it's good to know and it can always come out in a diagram uh, diagram form okay, when it comes to your exams or it could even potentially come out as a small mark essay question as well okay so if you have any questions you can always leave in the comment section below i will answer them um if not if you did enjoy this video okay be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the video uh, to the not, not to the video to the channel okay because it does help me out a lot and it, it's it's free right it doesn't cost anything so you can just hit that button um for me and i will really appreciate it all right if not i will see you guys in the next one have a good one bye bye